So today I'm gonna make at least half of you angry with me. And there's really no avoiding that because what I'm talking about today is the Yellowstone TV series. And I wanna focus on a couple of things that I really like about the show and I think are accurate and a couple of things that aren't. Immediately a lot of you are gonna say, well, it's just a TV show, so what do you care? As we know, shows and games and things like that influence what we think of things that we don't know or understand. So when you watch a Yellowstone TV show, you're gonna get ideas about politics and the way of life in Montana or that cowboys live and that ranches are. And I wanna make sure that people understand the truth about those, whether they're real things that are happening in Montana, what I think about them, and whether they're totally false and you should disregard them as just part of Hollywood. So what are we gonna talk about? Well, first of all, I'm gonna share three things that I really don't like about the show that I think they're getting wrong about Montana. And then I'm gonna share three things that I really do like about the show and what it portrays about Montana, the people and the lifestyle. And then I'm gonna tackle the big issue at the end and that's land, which is the overall overarching storyline of Yellowstone. What's happening to the land in Montana? So instead of calling these first three things that I don't like about Yellowstone, I'm gonna call them negative impacts from Yellowstone. So number one is brucellosis. In recent episodes, they have talked about brucellosis in a herd of bison that got in with John Dutton's herd of cattle. And the fact that now he has to ship his cattle immediately down to Texas because if the, Mont if the state of Montana found out that he had his cattle had possibly been exposed to brucellosis, then he would have to kill his entire herd. And that's the premise of uh, Rip having to take some cowboys and the whole herd of cattle all the way down to Texas because that's the, the only place they could find land to pasture them on. So brucellosis is actually a, a bacteria that gets in an animal and typically causes it to abort its calves. Um, this can actually have an effect on humans as well if they can get it, but basically the only way a human can get it is Technically is by rummaging around in the guts of an animal uh, While it's being butchered not not the meat It's almost never or never documented being in the meat at all and normal cooking temperatures kill it. So Here's the problem I have with this is the fact that in Montana, it's very rare that when you find brucellosis in a herd, for one thing, that you would um, kill the entire herd. They call it depopulate. Uh, that's something that they, you know, is kind of Hollywoodized in the show Yellowstone. And the, and the reason I have a problem with it is because it does show something that might give people the wrong impression about ranchers or what happens up here. Or the other thing that uh, is kind of off about that is if you're a rancher and you discover a bunch of aborted calves from buffalo in your pasture, which is what John Dutton and his cowboys did, the last thing you want to do is grab your herd and rush them off through a whole bunch of other states to Texas because if you did have brucellosis in your herd, the, the, the first thing you should do in that case is actually round up your herd and test them all for brucellosis. Find any inf infected animals, and if you do find some infected animals, then you isolate them, you isolate your herd from other herds, so you don't try to spread this thing all over the country, which is immediately <laughs> what they did. Uh, you don't really want to rush them off to Texas because if you do have an infected herd and you don't know it You're actually you possibly infecting not only you and your surrounding neighbors But also all the way down to a different state and several other states in between So that's a problem They do actually require um, I don't know exactly USDA I believe don't quote me on that it requires that all female animals of reproductive uh, that are intact reproductively because that's mostly how it's transmitted 
are bangs vaccinated so they're actually vaccinated against the brucellosis bacteria and that that is it's pretty difficult to do uh, you have to have a veterinarian do it but all the counties surrounding yellowstone the greater yellowstone area in montana wyoming and every, everywhere are required to vaccinate all their female animals uh, so that limits the the brucellosis greatly uh, another thing that you might be interested in is most often brucellosis is not f transmitted from buffalo or bison to cattle. Uh, it's found more often in elk to cattle. So that's one thing that uh, you might want to consider as well. So these are just some things that were off about how they portrayed that. Obviously it's Hollywood. You can watch the show. It's not like you know, I'm, I'm not trying to kill the show for you. I'm just trying to go through a few things that, that might affect your way of thinking of Montana. And, and because you don't really know the truth of it, it, and I want you to understand the truth so it, you can think about this thing in the correct way. So now when I'm out in the mountains or anywhere out here, one thing I like to carry in my saddlebags or along with me in my pocket is the wag bar. The wag bar is actually american wagyu beef and it's in a bar form just like this so they're really good handy snacks and uh they're i work with them now so and if you want to get 10 percent off of these things if you want to try some i'll leave a link for you down in the description to get 10 percent off it's called the wag bar who doesn't like a good snack? Especially good American Wagyu beef. Number two of negative things that they show in the hit series Yellowstone. Um, in this latest episode, I believe it was the latest episode, they're talking about stopping a pipeline. Now this is very political because if you start to discussing pipelines, and I, yes, I, again, I realize this is just a show, uh, but the pipeline thing is a big issue for people. Uh, we're talking about the Keystone Pipeline, which was shut down recently, and everybody's concerned about it. Now, on the show, they're portraying like, man, I don't want that to go through my land, wreck my land and everything. And, and they show it even going underneath the reservoir on the reservation, like they could possibly contaminate the water source of the reservation drinking water. So there's, Philip 66 has a pipeline right near me that goes right through this whole area. And so I thought I'd bring you up here and show you what that actually looks like. This is it. Now, I don't know if you call this ruining the country or not, but I driving up here, I know it's here. And I was like, did I, did I already cross it? <laughs> yes, you can see the pipeline. Absolutely. You can see where they dug it up. You can also see where a rail tra ra railroad track is. You can see where a water line was dug. You can see old ditches that people 100 years ago dug in. This is no more impact than that. So I guess the only danger to this would be possibly a pipeline. Uh, the only danger here would be like a breakage or leakage or something because this I believe, don't quote me on this, I believe this transfers oil from Canada down into the United States. But you really, I mean, cattle roam all, all over this. This is not an, this doesn't impede any elk movement. It doesn't impede any animal movement. There is no, I mean, you, it, it's not even that easy to see. If you can see it because of the tracks by it, a lot of people don't even know what this is. So the other thing is maybe in some alternate, well, I don't know. I, the way that the things are going, there's possible that somebody would make a pipe, like draw a pipeline going underneath somebody's reservoir water source. But that would be so much extra work to go underneath a reservoir with a pipeline that you would not do. Um, you would go one side or the other of it on in your planning state so that you don't have to go underneath a reservoir <laughs> Contours of the earth and water and all that kind of stuff is taken in consideration when they map out a pipeline so the somebody can uh, probably 
argue this point because I haven't seen the map of the Keystone Pipeline or anything like that. But these things do help actually a tremendous amount. This pipeline right here, I can't imagine the number of semis that would have to go down this highway burning diesel fuel to actually move the amount of oil that they move through a pipeline like this underground that you can't hear. It has no noise. There's no pollution in the air. There's no pollution underground unless you have a leak. I, I can't see the downside. So that one I, I see as portraying something in a way uh, in Yellowstone that would give somebody the idea, oh, well, okay, that's why we don't have pipelines. When if you really look at the pipeline, you're going, uh, not number one, the, the landowners are, are, are financially compensated for being able to put a pipeline through there. Not, not ongoing, but when it's laid. And then once it's reclaimed back into the, to the landscape, it's really not even noticeable, hardly. So, and it takes semis and, and vehicles and ships and everything out of the equation of transporting that oil in another way, in a, in a way that would actually use more fuel and tires and, um, you know, exhaust and everything else that you're eliminating. So I, don't, I see a pipeline as actually a huge benefit, not as a downside when it doesn't do anything to hurt the environment. The third negative that I have is really something to me personally. I feel that cowboys as a whole have gotten a rap of this super party crowd, drinking all the time, sleeping around with everybody, and, and that it's okay. And I don't think that in our society that's something that we should be portraying as something to aspire to. And so when I see it in shows, I understand that it's kind of something Hollywood does is, is try to make, you know, it, Hollywood has done that for a long time where they, they really combine that in with a show to make it uh, a lifestyle of just this raunchy, like sleep with everybody, drink all the time. And to me that, that portrays something that we don't really want to portray to people is that alcohol fixes your problems. Alcohol and sex fix your problems, basically. And so, personally to me, that, that's one thing that bothers me about the show. Now, are they going to change that? No, that's for sure not going to be changed. And that, I believe, is part of who Hollywood is. And then they wonder why we have problems with our children and uh, the next generations <laughs> using alcohol to try to, alcohol and sex, to try to figure out their, to fix their lives, you know, any when you see anything on television or not just in Yellowstone and somebody runs into a problem where they have to forget something in life they typically then go right to alcohol and sex and sleeping around and and that's just something that uh, to me we should not be teaching our kids and you might say well it's just a show yes shows teach people things teach people how to deal with things just as much as real life does I am going to now make a cup of coffee so I can share with you the three things that I do like about the show. And then we'll talk about the land issue, what the battle for land in Montana truly is. I know I could just use snow here, but um, it's really light powdery snow and you'd have to gather a lot of it just to get one little pot of coffee. So we're just going to dump some in here. Not a bad place to have coffee, huh? Coffee maker, little French press that I can carry around. It's really light, so you can put it in a backpack or a saddlebag or something like that. 
That's actually a lot. That might have been two pots. <laughs> oh well, it'll make some good, good thick coffee, right? So let's talk about the three things that I do like about Yellowstone. The first one is really how they are bringing attention to the ranchers' plight. You know, ranchers in Montana are are a, a big minority in the country, and ranchers all view themselves kind of how they portray in in uh, Yellowstone. It's like if you leave, you, you just leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. They don't want to actually deal with anything. You can look through my comments on all the ranching stuff that I do, and and the people who who are ranchers or are in this lifestyle, they just want to be left alone to do their own thing back here in this corner. The problem is, is right now our society doesn't want to leave them there. It wants to attack them about, you know, being harmful to the climate by raising cattle and, and you know, uh, not letting people on their private land and that people shouldn't be able to own such large amounts of land and, and things like that. So ranchers really are getting slammed without trying, without doing anything. And they're just doing what they've always done, which is sit back and allow the world to function in the way it is, I don't think it's going to be able to happen in the future. Ranchers are going to have to actually step step up and start talking about the things that they do and so that it help others understand how the the process of their food, food actually gets from here, uh, from here where it starts to your table. All right, my water is ready. sitting in the snow so it's it's pretty cold it's hard to keep it hot but we're gonna pour that in there there we go and put this in make sure it's sitting in the water so it gets all down in there all right so the second thing I like about the show is the way it tries to help people actually understand ranching it kind of goes along with the first one but that's what they're actually doing when you in the recent series in the recent part of this series you actually have seen now them going through brandings and uh and then there's an environmentalist a kind of an uh an animal rights activist if you will that is kind of being thrown in the middle of this because she's in trouble with the law and she has to learn about where meat comes from and the fact when they look up on the hill and she sees this huge forest fire burning and she's like, well, is anybody gonna put it out? And they're like, how would you put that out? It's in the middle of huge, huge amount of wilderness. If people people don't understand the, the issues and the way things that work out here. And that's one thing that I think that Yellowstone is doing a very good job of, especially recently is portraying that is really helping people through through teaching this lady this animal rights activist how things actually function on a ranch and that it isn't cruel to to vaccinate a calf you're actually doing it for the the benefit of the calf and and you have to or you'd lose a whole bunch more of the calves things like that i think they're doing a good job of portraying that actually watching this recent part of the series i was thinking holy cow they're actually doing what I'm doing on YouTube. My goal is to really show people what happens in ranch life. That that what they view as cruelty is often just a way of life. It's something that has to happen for food to end up on their table. Uh, you know, we used to be so closely connected to our food. If you wanted a chicken for, for dinner, if you wanted chicken for dinner, you had to go out in the backyard and kill a chicken. I mean, or you saw somebody do that. We're so connected to our food and the and how it be, how it got from the field to your table that we didn't ever really think about the things that we think about now. People are really blunted emotionally. They're they're traumatized by watching a calf be branded in our society because you don't really understand where food comes from. You you become emotionally emotion have an emotional problem with it and therefore you reject it without really learning any of the meanings to everything because if you're in a city let's say you're in a city like new york or los angeles 
what you hear is is what other groups who are also tied into emotion are actually telling you and and professors people look up at professors in like colleges and like oh my word they said it's true and like it's like they know i mean any anything academically that you learn in the book is has a possibility of being true but it's also could be somebody else's idea that they created from their own mind and emotions and life experiences and everything so you have to learn how to use your mind to decipher right and wrong in these areas for yourself and i think education is the only way to do that to give people an idea of what they could the other side there is another side to this so i do think realstone is doing a very good job of that all right let's pour a cup of coffee ever cooked anything outdoors it's always always seems to be just better somehow I, I don't I don't know why <laughs> taste of nature I guess adds a little flavor in there all right the number three thing that I like about Yellowstone is the fact that they don't shy away from the wolf and grizzly bear issue not that they mention grizzly bears a lot but they do show them in there as a problem right now we are being inundated in Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming by predator species. And it doesn't just affect ranching, it affects all anybody who hunts any, any wildlife organization anywhere. Because the more predators we get, the, the more that they kill in, in our populations. And you know, I was talking about this with somebody yesterday. Um, our wildlife is is sustained now by man managing the populations and we can't people say well the wolves were here first and so we need them back in here and i don't want to wolves are another story but i don't want to completely eliminate grizzly bears but i do think they need to be managed you can't just have so many predators that they're coming out into civilizations and causing so many problems uh, along with killing so much of our wildlife populations when they're babies. I mean, we don't eat the calves that come off the ground. We don't harvest calves that come off the elk babies and bison babies and everything, but the the that's what the wild animals eat. <laughs> so if you like that, then you want more predators. I mean, those are things that people just don't think about. In Yellowstone, they do portray that ranchers have to deal with these these wolves and bears all the time and people say well the losses just aren't that you know they're just not very big but it doesn't really matter when it's messing with your livelihood you know it's like even though it's a little different it's your herd of cattle or sheep or whatever you have it, it they're they're your livelihood in that business so just because you might be able to get compensated for it and being compensated for it means you have to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that a wolf or a bear killed that and sometimes that's very difficult to do so going by the numbers that you see from um from the any organization that posts this stuff like oh it's only this amount or that amount we don't really know how many calves cows and sheep are killed by wild animals because a lot of them aren't reported and a lot of them can't be proven that it was a wild animal so they can't be compensated for it so i do like that they show that 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 is a struggle in montana so you can see the three things that i've mentioned are a lot of the issues they're bringing to light that people may in cities and around may not have ever thought about that we deal with out here in the west and uh, those are now becoming i think to the forefront of people because you have to even though it's a tv show and it's just a tv show so they can do whatever they want in the tv show that's not really hollywoodized that that's really what we have to deal with and i think that's bringing it to the forefront of people's minds okay so to the final thing here i'm gonna take another sip of coffee Ooh, that's good it's really good it's strong coffee i i will say that <laughs> but i like it land there is definitely a battle going on for land and has been it's not recent it's just it's been for the last hundred years and that's 
one of the things they portray in Yellowstone is John Dutton trying to protect his land from basically the onslaught of progress. This is something that's already happened once in our history. This used to belong to the Indians. And even though they didn't view it that way, I, I don't believe the Indians really viewed it as like, this is our land, I own this piece, you own that piece kind of a thing. They had territories and they utilized the land and were pushed off of it in rather a dramatic and many times very horrible way. One thing you have to understand is that they're not making any more of this land. This look at the vast expanses of land just right here that we have in the west and down below me here there's subdivisions of houses all along uh, different areas so as this land is sold for development it starts to become covered with what we call civilization which is towns cities houses and i don't blame people for wanting it it's it's gorgeous I mean, this, I mean, obviously this is winter, so there's no cattle out here right now, but this is beautiful, beautiful land and it's untouched. You can see, even though there's a pipeline running right through it, you can't hardly see the pipeline. It is untouched land and ranchers that own land, sometimes they feel like, oh, I can't believe people would want my land. And, you know, people say, think I should be, you know, lucky that I have this. Yes, you should. You should feel absolutely lucky and unashamed, unashamed that you are lucky to have that land. Realize that you're lucky to own it and, and that your ancestors came here and settled and gave you this land because most of them got it through, um, you know, their descendants settling here and then uh, they inherited it from them. Don't feel bad about that. Don't feel like ashamed that you own it. Understand though that you're lucky to have it. And I think that changes your mindset. In Yellowstone, he's battling to keep that land from development and encroachment from development. He doesn't want an airport right next to it. And you might think, yeah, but it's not his land. The more people encroach upon your land, so the neighbors that sell and there becomes a subdivision there, there becomes more and more traffic, more and more people problems. People are people, humans, create issues of their own <laughs> just so you know not that you don't know this so the land out here is becoming more and more sought after and more and more valuable and in the west there's all kinds of debate about access to private land should should private land remain private should public land be sold to the private and, and should be what's the use rights on this land or that land and how should wildlife be managed on this land or that land <clears throat> and it's an ongoing thing now i believe in the rights of people to own land i believe in private property ownership i don't think that all of it should be i love all of our public land it's a vast amount of public land in montana and you can go experience the outdoors and wilderness in so many different areas of Montana, it's incredible. I don't want that to go away, but I also understand the private rights ownership of land and how it needs to stay that way. Now, how do we keep this land like John Dutton is trying to do with his place in the show? How do we keep this land from having houses all over it? Because I know a lot of you watching would want to have a house right here. Do I blame you? No. So there's not I don't believe in the government telling you, you can't do that. Now you can, you can put a conservation easement on your land, which makes it impossible for you to subdivide, meaning you can't sell it for development. And uh, I've talked about that in some other videos, some of my other short videos. If you wanna hear more about that, make sure you let me know. But I honestly believe that price fixing and you know, regulations is not the way to save this land from being developed. I honestly believe that we need to figure out, find new ways to innovate for ranchers who own the land right now to be able to make enough income off of the property from ranching that they don't sell it for development. And nothing against rich people who, who come in and buy large tracts of land uh, for their own purposes 
A lot of times though, they're taking it out of production. And I do, I do have a problem with that because a food source in the world is, could, is gonna become a problem at some point if you don't protect it right now. The more people come out here and build on land that's productive, and not that this is horribly productive, but it is beautiful, uh, the less amount of, of acreage we have to provide food for the world. And at some point that can create a problem. And we'll talk about that in future episodes as well. So I think the land issue that John Dutton is trying to protect his land from development is actually um, something that's really driving me to delve in deeper as to how you help ranchers actually do that. How do, how do you help them maintain their ranch? Now, one of the things in, in Yellowstone that they actually did, which I was amazed at, is they actually talked about the Four Sixes Ranches. The, she, uh, Beth, called the Four Sixes Ranch in Texas to find out how they sold their meat. And then she's like, well, let's, let's do that. And that's something a lot of ranchers are gonna have to start doing is innovating in those ways. They're gonna have to start, instead of selling their calves at weaning weight, they're gonna have to keep them for an entire year, year and a half, and then butcher them themselves. So they cut out the middleman. That's a, one way, at least, that ranchers can make more money per cow than they are right now. Now that brings up a huge problem. Ranchers are not good at marketing. So that's a hurdle because you can raise your cattle butcher it, have a whole bunch of beef, but you have to be able to sell that beef to make a profit. Those are other issues we'll be talking about in future videos. So I kind of covered all of this. That's kind of how I see it. It's what I feel about Yellowstone in, in both positive and negative. And uh, if you guys have any questions about any of this stuff, make sure you leave them in the comments. This would be a great discussion on anything I've, I've touched on, all six things or seven things that I discussed in this video. All right, I'm Trinity Vandenacre. Until next time, God bless.